day and welcome. In line with its mandate to provide a forum for consultation and dialogue for stakeholders in the maritime industry, the Nigerian Port Consultative Council, MPCC, recently paid a costly visit to Nigerian Shippers Council's headquarters in Lagos. We have details of that visit and the NSC's mediation meeting with the Maritime Workers Union of Nigeria, Mawun, and the shipping companies, Agent and Freight Forwarders Association, SCAFI. Also on the program today is our tidbit segment, where we shall bring you happiness in the local and international maritime space. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the program. I'll be back shortly. Nigerian ship has cancelled day to serve you well. No matter the problem, we go solve them for you. Yes, so the Nigerian ship has cancelled the feeling in a parole now for every level. And as soon as goods, they move from port A, go enter port B with a measure within on a needle. For the Nigerian ship has cancelled, we don't shop proper to fit here you well, work with you well, and help you fit serve your customers them better, no matter where them day. As we country port economic regulator, the Nigerian ship has cancelled get every every now to fit make government consider the problem when she pass them the face visit to office phone number four or to buy your daily show your daily lane a papa email us for nsc at shipperscouncil.gov.ng we website now www.shipperscouncil.gov.ng Nigerian shippers council with a meet now for the port of Nani. the program you are watching is the shipper brought to you by Nigerian shippers council the nation's port economic regulator my name is Oluwa Shegun Aloko. We begin the program by telling you that the Nigerian Port Consultative Council says it will continue to promote smooth and efficient functioning in the nation's maritime industry. The council says it will achieve this through the provision of a viable platform for consultation and discussion on issues affecting the industry. Chairman of the Nigerian Port Consultative Council Mr. Bolaji Sumola gave the assurance when he paid a costly visit to the management of Nigerian Shippers Council in Lagos. Abiodun Adeshino compiled this report, presented by Ifeinwa Okonkwo. The Nigerian Port Consultative Council, NPCC, comprised the Nigerian Port Authority, the Nigerian Shippers Council, and other maritime stakeholders. The council, amongst others, addresses issues affecting members and other stakeholders in the maritime industry. The whole idea is to promote efficiency and smooth operation at the ports. Discussions at this meeting between the Nigerian Port Consultative Council and the Nigerian Shippers Council centered on various issues, including the self-collection of the 1% freight stabilization fee. Chairman Nigerian Ports Consultative Council, MPCC, Mr. Bolaji Somola, noted that Nigerian Shippers Council's contribution to the development of the nation's maritime sector cannot be overemphasized and reiterated the need to strengthen the council's regulatory power. It's important that a lot of decisions and actions going on within this industry are put together, they are articulated in a way that will help both the players, the government, and eventually trickle down to increasing our GNDP and our GNP. So the Nigerian Port Consultative Council is an established ombudsman, like I said, advocacy group for the port industry. All members, all key players within the port industry are members. We advocate on behalf of all others. We speak for those who cannot speak. We touch areas where those most of the agencies feel it is no-go area, where issues of legislation, where issues of implementation are to be taken. We take it up, we are fully geared and ready to see that we put in our best to see that your work and your tenure will be one of the best by the time I eventually you have to come in this uh, I think I will leave it at this. Our presence here this afternoon is really to showcase ourselves, to know that we are here. Uh, we'll continue to, to dialogue, we'll continue to put in our cases as from time to time. This is a one of to show that we are welcome, sir. We welcome you to the industry and PCC is ready to collaborate with you for the growth of the maritime, for the growth and future of 
for the country of Nigeria. Another member of the council, Mrs. Chinwe Ezenwa, said the Nigerian Shippers Council cannot function effectively without the timely release of its statutory funding. ECC is also in the vanguard of promoting good governance in the maritime sector. We fought a war before the council got its regulation. We fought it individually, we fought it collectively, and I will promise you that we are going to fight to a finish. Because what you are demanding is your right, not just to go to 7% and be collecting money from MPA and all these people, no. As a matter of right, what are you going to be regulating if you don't have the money? How will you run this beautiful organization? This council used to be the encyclopedia of the maritime sector when I was in the Ministry of Transport. If you are looking for quality workforce, you can only get it from here. So, so if it is to get this thing done, I will say that our chairman, the new chairman, our legal man, the cap, everybody seated here, we are ready until we deliver on this uh, promise. So there is no shaking. The maritime lawyer, Barrister Oswala Nwabara, and member of the Nigerian Ports Consultative Council expressed the readiness of the MPCC to support the aspirations of the Nigerian Shippers Council. The Council is the only body that can actually regulate because all the other bodies in the maritime industry, they have to regulate, there will be conflict of interest. So we are happy that you have a bill that would eventually make your regulatory powers flow from an act of national assembly. Like they have said, we are here to inform you, assure you that as a body and even individually, we will support you to sell through with the bill at the National Assembly. We are also a mediatory body in the maritime industry. You may find us very, very available and ready to mediate uh, when it comes to uh, sorting out certain uh, issues or disagreements in the maritime industry. We are empowered to do that as a mediators in maritime industry. Executive Secretary, Chief Executive Officer, Nigerian Shippers Council, Barrister Pius Akuta, MON, spoke on the council's source of funding, the implications and the need for self-collection of 1% freight stabilization fee as provided in the statutory mandate of the council. I believe that the council will have you, I mean, handy to provide a leadership that is needed, particularly at this point in time when we are looking at driving the economy towards the direction of the maritime sector. We talk about the comment you made regarding the work of the consultative forum, that of advocacy. And I will say that I acknowledge the advocacy that you as a forum has played in the past in shaping the course of the Nigerian Shippers Council particularly in the role as economic regulator. That I've done the first reading and the second reading. And then we are going, we've gone into the committee hearing, and after which we'll go into the public hearing. And uh, I believe that I don't need to look elsewhere for advocacy, but you are here and you have given us the commitment to support us. We call on you to give us that support. We need it now more than ever before. In a separate interview with the shipper, Prince Olaiwala Shitu, a former president of the Association of Nigerian Licensed Custom Agents, ANCLA, also expressed his unwavering support for Nigerian Shippers Council's direct collection of the 1% freight 
stabilization fee. The NMPA deals with vessels, they deal with the cargo. Okay? Nimasa deals with the vessel for safety. But shippers' country is supposed to regulate everybody, including them, by law. They're supposed to regulate anybody that is charging to collect fee must be regulated by Shippers Council. So because of the loophole in the law, that lack of empowerment, they just look at Shippers Council, what are you talking about? No, we don't have time for you. All those things will be straightened up because the master collects money through their operations. MPA does the same thing. NIWA does the same thing. And Shippers Council is supposed to be the regulator of everybody, including the company I run in the maritime industry. But I still have hope that Shippers Council can do more much, much more. And that's why I support their empowerment and I support their funding. If government is not going to give them funds, let them generate funds by themselves. Other stakeholders who spoke with the shipper called for proper funding of Nigerian Shippers Council for optimal execution of its regulatory mandate. They should give Shipper Council a trial. The five percent is okay, but it's little. It's very little. With the respond big responsibility before the Shippers Council. If 1% of this is given to Shippers Council, it will assist the Council in performing its duties as the economic regulator of our ports. The Shippers Council must engage in advocacy and education and enlightenment. What do I mean by that? Because when you have importers, you have uh, freight forwarders, you have terminal operators, you have even the Nigerian Maritime and Safety Agency, these are people, they need more education. They need more enlightenment. And there's no way you carry all these functions without one little payment or the other by the importers. Let's assume that you are having an enlightenment program for importers in Nigeria, particularly let's say Lagos. These are people that you need to invite for education, for enlightenment. And there's no way they will not pay. You can't get education. Education is not free. Enlightenment, knowledge, imparting knowledge is not free. Importers, freight forwarders, uh, terminal operators, they need education. And there's no way you will certainly charge them. And that's part of uh, ways of making money. Meanwhile, on the minimum standard wages negotiation between the maritime workers and shipping service providers, the parties have agreed on some terms on the minimum standard for workers, following the intervention of the Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Shippers Council, Barrister Pius Akuta, MON. I want to appeal to both sides. We want a sector that is stable and that is moving forward. We have a lot of work to do. We have a minister who is committed to developing this sector very quickly. And any crisis coming out from this sector now may hamper or delay the speed with which he wants to move. The policy that is being developed for the sector will be out in a short while. Uh, that policy is dealing with issues of a decay infrastructure and is trying to look at how to revamp the infrastructure uh, looking generally at achieving the efficiency of our ports so that the business in the sector will begin to boom. And any crisis coming out of failed negotiations like this will not be good for the sector. So I want to take this opportunity to appeal to all of us that it might look like we have failed, but uh, I don't think we have failed. We have made tremendous progress in terms of this negotiation. Just little issues dividing us from hitting that point of convergence. But I think uh, we will see what we can do in order to resolve this as quickly as possible. In appreciation, the President General of Maritime Workers Union of Nigeria, Comrade Adewale Adenyoju, applauded Barrister Pius Akuta for the role that the council has played in the negotiations. I want to tell you, our ears, that we will continue to support your good agenda. And uh, the you know, here since today we are reformists, we are not uh, strike mongers. It just has to do with the attitude of our employers. Uh, I think uh, we can still go back to drawing board and uh, we sit down as a mother and the children so that we can uh, come back and tell the years this is where we are. The chairman, shipping companies, agent, and freight forwarders association. Scafe, Barrister Boma Alabi said the employers of labor have paid priority attention to the welfare of workers, adding that they have agreed to some terms on the ongoing negotiation and promised to look into the issues on retirement benefits 
for maritime workers. I'm talking on retirement now, because I take it one head at a time. We came back with our proposal, which gives a significant 10% additional of total emoluments to a cadre of our employees. So let us please make progress and negotiate with sincerity so that we can achieve something like we rightly said we want to. We want to achieve an agreement, but we cannot achieve it on impossible terms. The discussions between the Nigerian Shippers Council and stakeholders highlight the need for collaboration in advancing the maritime sector, addressing funding, regulatory power, and labor standards is crucial for Nigerians' aspirations as a regional maritime hub. The expressed commitment from industry leaders underscores a shared goal of driving positive change for the welfare of maritime workers and national development. I would like to remind you that the Council has unveiled a web-based application designed to streamline the confirmation of reasonableness of demolish fee. Visit the portal today at www.arpp.shipperscouncil.gov.ng. Tidbit is next after this short break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. As part of the Nigerian Shippers Council succession plan, a training focused on port efficiency was recently organized by the Council's Learning and Development Division. The knowledge transfer facilitated by Director, Consumer Affairs Department, Chief Kajitan Agu, delved into enhancing the competitiveness and user-friendliness of Nigerian ports, emphasizing improved infrastructure, reduced cargo dwell time, and streamlined clearance processes. Chief Agu stressed concerted efforts toward effective port systems, reflecting NS's commitment to capacity development and optimal regulatory performance through personnel training and retraining. In other news, Nigerian Shippers Council NSE has pledged support for urban planning initiatives at the first international conference on urban planning, energy transition, and resilient cities organized by Nasarawa State University. Represented by Director Abuja Leizon Office, Aja Karmatu Otma, the Executive Secretary, Chief Executive Officer, Barrister Akuta Piles, MOI, emphasized the importance of sustainable urban development. He highlighted the NSS commitment to developing critical transport infrastructure, such as inland dry ports and vehicle transit areas, to enhance shipping services and the congest seaports. He further urged support for President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's reform agenda for sustainable development. Shifting gears, staff and management of the Nigerian Shippers Council, NSE, recently released a splendid unwind at the NSE's headquarters in Lagos during a vibrant get-together. The event brings with cherished memories and engaging activities, including music, games, and dance. Amidst the lively atmosphere, Executive Secretary, Chief Executive Officer, NSE, Barrister Akuta Pius, MOA, took the stage to address the enthusiastic staff, inspiring them with his words of encouragement and unveiled plans for the council to commence paperless operations. Laughter, cheers, and camaraderie filled the air, making the event a memorable celebration of unity. We encourage all participants in the maritime industry to visit our website, www.shipperscouncil.gov.ng for more information about our services and to report any concerns they may have. Let's now check on our complaint register for the week. We received a total of one complaint and it is ongoing investigation. This complaint has to do with overtime cargo. Moving on now to international maritime stories. Monsieur OSK Lines, Mo, Sumitomo Heavy Industries Limited, and Mo Shipping Management Company Limited have unveiled a cutting edge work climbing robot tailored for steel structures. Any class N case converted innovation endorsement certification. 
The robot's exceptional agility allows it to navigate various surfaces with ease, capturing high-quality images for precise inspection. Accuracy and versatility promise to revolutionize ship inspection and maintenance, reducing risks and costs. In a similar development, Caterpillar Marine and Seco International have achieved milestones in advancing autonomous vessels for naval applications. Supporting the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency's No Money Required Ship Initiative. The project aims to enhance safety and cost savings by eliminating crew quarters utilizing Caterpillar's marine certified engines. Beyond naval use, autonomous vessels could benefit cargo transportation and energy sectors, strengthening supply chains. To conclude, DP World, in partnership with Rumo, is expanding Santos Port with a new grain and fertilizer terminal, costing $500 million. The 13-month project, financed by various means, aims to handle 9 million tons of grain and 3.5 million tons of fertilizer annually, boosting port capacity by almost 20%. This collaboration marks the world's fourth investment in Brazil since 2013, aiming to enhance trade capabilities and long-term value for customers and stakeholders. The Nigerian Shippers Council is now better poised with responsive systems in place to help you and other shippers get seamless, stress-free transition for your clients' goods from point A to B. Today at the Nigerian Shippers Council, timeliness, orderliness, transparency and efficiency is all we care about. Put your complaint through to our helpline. Visit us at number 4, Ayodele Shoyode Lane at Papa Lagos or reach us on www.shipperscouncil.gov.ng Nigerian Shippers Council, we meet you at the point of your needs. Nigerian Shippers Council, we meet you at the port of your needs. As we draw the curtain on today's program, the conversation towards repositioning Nigerian Shippers Council is ongoing and we are determined to do all in our quest to succeed in that regard. Thank you for watching. Let's do it again next week. Bye for now.